Okay, hi everyone. So in this YouTube, I'm going to show you the basics of using Sunlight 3. Um, and now I have to put a caveat on this right at the start, and that is I'm actually a music teacher. Um, I have not really done much lighting until this year, and I've been drawn into it because our fella that used to do uh, lighting in my workplace um, has since left, and so I've been thrown into the position of having to learn lights. So if you're fairly new to lights, you're looking at Sunlight 3 or you've just got Sunlight 3 and you need to know how to use it at a really basic level, um, then this is definitely the session for you. If you're already a pro, um, you might want to move on, um, but I'll leave that entirely up to you. So I've got an empty show um, in Sunlight 3. I'll actually go through the process of creating an empty show to start with, and I'm just going to walk through adding in lights or pages into the system and we'll go that far and then I think I'll do how to actually use the lights in subsequent lessons. So up here in the controller menu I can open and save a show. Oh, I should add too, so Sunlight do have some tutorials on their website however um, and Sunlight perhaps take note if you're listening look I did find that you went through them pretty fast and there was a lot of um, prior knowledge probably needed for those lessons. Um, also, the fellow who does it, um, very strong French accent, nothing wrong with that, um, but there's loads of reverb and the audio is not particularly clear. So um, I think if you tidied that up, it would, it would go a long way to helping your tutorials. Anyway, we're going to create a new show, like that other one, I'm going to call it Empty Show. Okay, and it loads up the show, which in this case is completely empty. I haven't done anything to it yet. And it comes up with this screen um, where you can choose what lights you want to add in to the show. Because currently, there's no lights to control in here whatsoever. Now, they do have a very extensive library of lights. They are ordered in, um, in order of like brand. So, um, you know, ADB Lighting Technologies, for example, there's some lights that they've done. Or you expand out Apex and there's a light. So there's, there's quite an extensive list. Now in our hall, um, I did find that I had to create some of the lights myself. And that's probably a separate lesson. Um, and it's used, um, or it's done rather, using the scan library. You can get in there and modify the different attributes of a light to make it suit the hardware that you've got, if it isn't in this list. When I did that, I plonked mine right down the bottom here. So we have a um, PAR, LH is the name of the building. It's a PAR 64 light, and I've set them all in three channel mode. So that channel one operates the red, and channel two operates the green, and channel three operates the blue um, function on that light. So I choose my light, and then I click next. And here we have a what they call a DMX universe. Um, so different lights support this in different ways. Um, I have no requirement to go beyond 512 channels, so really I'm just going to focus on one DMX universe, and I'm not going to even talk about how to use these other universes. I am not the person to come to for that. But basic usage of one universe uh, DMX light. Um, I put in my PARs. Now the, the PARs in our hall start at channel 9. So I've configured the first one at channel 9. It uses three channels, so it'll take up channel 9, 10, and 11. The next light I've set to channel 12. So it'll be 12, 13, 14. And then the next light will be 15, so it'll be 15, 16, and 17. Each time going red, green, blue, um, using the three channels. Now I've got 12 of these lights, um, which is 40-something 40, uh, 40 channels. Um, so if I go to 9, for my first channel, because my first light is on 9, um, and then my number of fixtures is 12, and then I click Patch, and boom, there are all my 12 PAR lights right up to channel 44, okay? And then I click Next. Now generally, these following dialog boxes, I don't need to touch. I just Next, 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 Finished, and it's, it's done. Um, and that's what I'm going to do now. Because, you know, these functions, my lights don't have most of these functions. And the ones they do, they can do rainbow colors. Um, so they're already ticked. 
They can't do tilt and move and pan and center and circle. They can't do that stuff, so it's all unticked by default. So I don't have to worry about it. They can flash and they can chase. Click on next. Um, and then you, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it. Um, you can choose whatever color. That's just the color it's going to come up in the screen. It has nothing to do with the color that the lights are actually going to show in the show. It's just when I hit finish, you'll see the color will pop up there. All right, and now we have our PAR64 lights. And they're all basically the function of all 12 lights are together in this one panel. I do like um, the way that they've set this up. It does make it easy. So there are some buttons to make the lights do different things. Um, I can turn the lights on individually um, through that function there or all on together. Um, I can turn on color mixing and then choose which color I want them to be and I'll turn that color all together. Remember you have to use a dimmer to get that color up. I'll show you that in a moment and you can click on these. Now, the brilliant thing about this software um, and the reason I bought it is it's got the 3D um, viewer so I can see what it's going to look like in our venue. Um, and that's fantastic for me because I do not spend a lot of time at the venue or in the venue and I like to be able to poke away at things when I have the time on laptop um, to do it. So to view the 3D viewer, I click view and uh, other windows, easy view 3D, there it is. And you click on that. Now I have actually, notices, yeah. So um, this is brought up the 3D model of our venue that I've recreated here in 3D. Um, I'm not gonna show you how I did that in this lesson. Um, yours will come up with, I think it just has a stage and four walls and the lights are there. Um, so you'll be able to get the basic function happening just with it on its default setting. Um, you can see the lights are currently changing. So the lights that I've just put in are these ones along the top. Now, when I configured them in the 3D viewer, the 3D viewer already knew that they would be from channel 9 to 44. So it's just popped them in um, and they've been configured automatically <coughs> and matched up with my 3D view. Now, these color effects, I can turn that off again. So on, off, on, off. I can do this effect, which is pretty cool. Just changes the colors across. And again, I can turn that off, on, off. I can do my color mixing, which turns them all on. And I can put in whichever color I want. Remembering the fader that, oh sorry, dimmer rather. Sorry, I'm a musician, aren't I, fader? They're called dimmers in the lighting world. Um, and then there's this chase, which isn't gonna work. That's not working, I have no idea why that's not working. Oh, there it is, because I need that on. So you can see it's chasing across. Now, I was really frustrated initially. I'm like, that's a really crappy chase. What on earth am I gonna use that for? Um, and then eventually I discovered that you can make your own much, much better ones. Um, all right, so you also have this flashy thing. You can change how that's configured as well. Turn that off, turn that off. Um, and then with this, uh, now how does that work again? Yeah, so you can have multiple effects on at once. So that's flashing with the color effect. Or flashing with the color effect, turn the flashing off. Um, this thing, normally you can fire up different lights at once, and I don't know why that's working. I think I'm just going to move on, and yeah, like I said, I'm not a lighting expert. I'm just showing you the basics. Okay, now I'm going to add a new page, and this is for our spotlights. You might have seen in that 3D view, we have some spotlights out on the sides, out on the wings there. Um, so let's throw them in. I'm just gonna minimize that. It can stay there in the background. To add new lights, I go page, new page. Um, what I have is a generic spotlight, um, but I've created a generic spot. Literally, it has one dimmer on one channel. Um, so super simple. Click next. Um, and they are configured to channels one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them. They start at channel one, so number of fixtures, six, patch, there they are. Um, click next, and again, this is all, I've never had to touch any of this. You know, it's got the two effects that these lights can do. It's literally on, off, and everything in between. Um, I can give them a color if I want to. Here we go, 
and the color just pops up on the side there. And now I have two screens. I've got one for my spotlight and one for my pass. So if I bring up my 3D view, I can now play with my spotlights. Why is it put them right there? Ah, okay, so this, this can happen. Um, it's put new ones there instead of using the ones I'd already configured out on the wings. But I do find once you've got your 3D view set up, what you can do is just reload it again. Um, let's try this one. Do you want to save changes? No, 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 not really. Yeah, notice those ones in the middle have gone. My pars are back in the right spot. Now, hopefully, yeah. So there we go. So, um, and you can see as I've gone through, I've continually saved a new file and saved the backups. I really encourage you to do that when you're learning how to use this because um, I've messed it up a number of times learning how to do it and fiddle with it. Um, and look, the manual is there, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's not the greatest manual. Some quality YouTube tutorials is really what's needed. Um, right, so all the lights flashing is the little lightning bolt. And here I can demonstrate turning on the individual lights because I need them. All right, or all of the lights off, on, off, chase, where it just flashes through them. And there's my spotlights. Okay, so that's a, a basic rundown on the basic usage of um, Sunlight Suite 3. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take it a little bit further and I'm going to have a play around with making up your own buttons in here to do your own effects. Because if, you, if you're doing a production or a show, um, like we happen to be doing this year, um, you need to have buttons programmed in to do things automatically. Um, you can't be going through the show clicking these all of these things to get exactly the effect you want. It just won't be effective. So you need buttons for scenes, and that's where this comes in. So um, if I want to make a new scene for my pars, for example, I click New Scene. Now, honestly, I have not worked out all of the functions in here. Um, like I said, it's just a basic lesson, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this New Scene 1. It's going to create a button in here called New Scene 1 where I can make this go. And I'm just using Empty and OK and Edit, which brings up the editor for the scene. Here it is. All right, now um, I'm primarily working with Easy Time. There are a few different methods. There's this Easy Step Fade, Easy Step No Fade. You know, there's a few different functions, or you can just, you can literally just turn them on and then operate your faders independently to however you want and that should be coming up in the 3d oh they're not are they turned on no all right i use this one here it is easy time and then up in here i click on the easy time box and i can do some really funky things like obviously pan and tilt no good for pars because they're completely static and stationary I really like the chaser one, um, so I'm going to drag that in. And this gives you a bit of an idea of what this is going to do, um, you know, which is which is handy. I like I like that view thing. It's nice and simple, and it makes sense. I can change the color. There we go. That's of all the other lights, and then you got one light doing white. Turn that off. Um, and then they've got these preset chasers. I also like these. There's that one. It's really slow. Speed it up. It's pretty cool. From the outside in, from the inside out. Chaser 2 is cool. I really like that. So, um, say I want to use this, and then here's my two colors. A bit like in a paint program. I can click what color I want it to be. Um, there's also some color presets here. Two color, Ooh. four color, hmm. except it's not giving me four colors. I don't know why that is. Let's go back to. So I'm going to make one of these black because red and green just doesn't do it for me. All right, so there's my thing, and there it is. The only thing is that that little viewer doesn't really give you a good picture on how fast it's going for some reason. If you look at that, you can see it's actually going really slow. Um, so what I tend to do is you can grab it up the end here and if I want a nice fast chase and speed it up. 
there we go make it a bit smaller not that small that small okay and you can see what's doing there let's stop that let's um, save that and then I can close that off save changes and here's my new scene one button there so in it is like nothing everything off bring up my little viewer again and then if I click new scene one there's our cool chase yeah a bit better than this chase that comes with it I think in it to turn it off it's not even working right now I don't know why um, so there's the chase I've designed for a new scene all right um, similarly you can make new scenes for um, for our spots here so if I click on the spots make sure they're selected new scene I'm just gonna go um, empty okay and edit again um, there's just one light there I'm gonna pull in my easy time easy step time what's it called easy time um, and you know what effects can I do with this well let's have a look at the gradient one and there's the effect phaser button is really cool what it does is staggers the lights so I've got six lights and it's gonna stagger the way that they're fading in and out that can be really handy I could speed it up slow it down oh, just depending on what you want um, actually I quite like that I'm gonna click OK again I find I need to speed things up here so I've got to make that time shorter basically what I'm doing is I'm saying this effect is gonna complete in two seconds and then it repeats instead of four seconds or whatever it was on by default click Save close that one off save yes and here it is it's called scene let's have a look 